This video describes how marketing works in GoVenture Entrepreneur Full Business. So here we're on the marketing brand screen and we can see three primary metrics, business reputation, advertising effectiveness, and brand equity. Brand equity is a measure of how well known and how well regarded your business is. So how well known your business is based on brand awareness. How aware are consumers of your brand? And then how well regarded your business is, is based on your business reputation. And you can see that business reputation is made up of customer satisfaction, employee morale, paying your bills on time, and social responsibility. So these four factors contribute to your overall business reputation score. Let's take a closer look at brand equity. When you start a new business, no one really knows about your business. But what happens is word of mouth promotion will start to increase the awareness of your business. So as consumers discover your business, they will tell others about it. Um, and they'll also just discover it on their own as well. And that increases your brand awareness. So a new business will see its brand awareness slowly increase over time, automatically without any marketing or advertising effort. However, you can only get so much awareness through word of mouth. Eventually, you'll hit a cap and your brand awareness will not grow any further until you invest uh, money on marketing and advertising. So once you're ready to spend money on advertising, you have to consider your advertising effectiveness, which we can see here is comprised of targeting effectiveness, messaging effectiveness, and media effectiveness. Your overall advertising effectiveness will influence how effective your investment in advertising is. What that means is, the better you're able to identify your target customers, craft a message that will resonate with those customers, and then choose the right media in order to reach those customers, the more effective you are at doing those things, the better your investment in advertising will be. And that's what advertising effectiveness is measuring. So when you're ready to start advertising, you've got to actually do three things. You've got to set your targeting, your messaging and your media, which you can see at the bottom of the screen here. But before we do that, let's take a quick look at programs. So you have five options here on programs. You can improve the signage and appearance of your business. You can improve your customer service, your product quality. Uh, you can conduct market research, which will boost your advertising effectiveness. And you can implement a sales discount. Now you can follow the directions that are provided here for each of these choices. I won't go any further in this video. Let's go on to advertising. Here you have two types of advertising you can invest money in. Product line and brand advertising and sales promotion and discount. And you can invest any, a certain amount of money in each or both of these options. But remember, the effectiveness of the money you spend on these options is going to be influenced by your advertising effectiveness which is your targeting, your messaging, and your media. So before you set your targeting, messaging, and media, you should have a good understanding of your customers. So here we can see the psychographics of our customers. So psychographics are the factors that influence how customers make purchases. And understanding consumer groups and psychographics will help you improve your targeting messaging and media. And by the way, you should always refer to the help text at the bottom of each screen that will explain a little bit more information. So here on this screen, we are seeing that our city, in terms of the customers that are approaching us, there's 10 types of consumers. We profiled them into 10 groups and we can see each of the groups here. And in this particular case, they're labeled M1, M2, M3 because I'm, in, I'm on Main Street and they're just labeled to match Main Street. And at the bottom in our legend, we can see uh, what factors influence each of these consumer groups. So I can see price, quality, reputation, and time. So if I were to look at M1, consumer group M1, which is about 10% of the population, because this graphic shows us uh, customer psychographics by population percentage, which means the height of the graphic is a ratio of the population percentage of that group. In this case, all 10 bars are the same height, which means there's equal population for group one 
and group two and group three and group four. In other words, M1, this consumer group of people, is 10% of the overall population that could visit my business. M2 is also 10% and so on. If your chart is different in your simulation, it means uh, that uh, the population percentages are not the same. For example, if this M1 chart uh, bar was only half as high as the M2, that would mean M1 has half as many consumers as M2. But in my example here, they're all the same. So they're 10% of the overall population. Now what's interesting about M1 is that it's mostly purple. In fact, about half of the bar is purple, which I can see here means price. So the primary decision influence that these consumers are using to determine what they want to buy and how happy they are with what they buy is price. These consumers are driven mostly by price. They want the lowest price option. But you'll notice the green bar is also pretty, hard, pretty large as well. Green means time. That means these consumers also value time. They want quick service. So if I want to attract and keep these consumers happy in consumer group M1, I need to have a low price and fast service. That's what this is telling me. And you can see these other two factors of reputation and quality, they're still a factor as well, but much smaller influence than price and time. And as you interpret each of the consumer groups, you can see there's a variability in all of these uh, factors. And I can identify, again, which consumers I want to target and then match my price and quality and reputation and service time to meet the needs of the customers that I'm targeting. Because in the real world of business, you can't attract all consumers. You're never gonna be able to attract all consumers, so you want to identify a subset or a group of consumers in which you're going to target. And that's what we're doing on the screen is trying to understand the consumers that are in our neighborhood, in our city, and then identify how we're going to match up with our business. Once we have a, better, a good understanding of that, we can then move to targeting. So what targeting does is it requires us to identify which of the 10 consumer groups we're gonna target and how much effort we're gonna put on targeting those. So for example, if I go back here, if I identify, let's say M1 and M2 and M3 as my target consumer groups in targeting, I should put most of my emphasis on those three groups. So right now it's not, you can see it's distributed over M4 and 5 and 6. So I could, let's say, remove these down to zero and move this up to 30. So now I've got 30% of my focus and my investments going to be on targeting M, consumer group M1, 30% M2, 30% M3. Now these have to add up to 100, and you can see right now they only add up to 90. So I could increase this maybe to, to 40. So I've got three consumer groups. I do have to identify at least three group, groups. But I could also decide maybe, well, I want to target group four as well a little bit, or maybe not four, maybe I'll go down to eight, you know, based on what I'm seeing in the consumer profiles. It's totally up to me, um, and I can adjust these uh, as I want, uh, but they do have to add up to 100%, and they should match who I'm targeting. And once the simulation proceeds to the next day, I'll actually see a score here, which will represent my targeting effectiveness score. And so what the simulation is going to do is it's going to look at the actual consumers we're servicing and we're serving and determine how accurate our targeting is. So if I say here that I expect that 30% of the customers that I'm serving will match the M1 profile, then I'll score really well on this selection. Same with two and three and so on. But if I'm off, let's say I'm actually only servicing 20% not 30%, I'm gonna lose points on this one. So that will reduce my overall targeting effectiveness. And so what I'll have to do is every day or every second or third day, I'll experiment by adjusting these until I hit my target. And we're gonna see some little icons that'll actually give us some indication whether we're actually too high or too low on any particular setting. So those icons are gonna be really helpful in refining our targeting as, as we go along. So that is targeting, and I'll also mention that you can set this right now how I, however I want, and I can change it as often as I want today until midnight. You'll notice right now it's just 1.30 in the afternoon because any changes I make here actually will not go into effect until midnight. 
So I can change this as often as I want because it has no effect at the moment. But as soon as midnight hits, it's going to lock these settings so I won't be able to change them tomorrow. And it's going to lock them for a full day. It will actually apply those settings for that full day and continue to apply them going forward until I change them. I'll be able to change them after a day has passed. So at midnight, everything gets locked. So today's Monday. So midnight means Tuesday. So all day Tuesday, I will not be able to change these settings. I will see the results. The results will appear here in this, in this uh, chart. Uh, and then the, uh, uh, the little icons I mentioned will appear actually on Wednesday morning. So Wednesday morning at midnight, it will unlock everything, show me some icons to give me some assistance in refining my targeting. And now I can actually change things again. And, and again, I have all day to change those, and then it will lock again at midnight. If I don't make any changes, it'll stay unlocked, but it'll keep applying the same settings day after day until I decide to change them. So that's how the targeting works. Let's look at messaging. So messaging involves uh, advertising, marketing, uh, and keywords that you would use in your advertising and marketing materials, whether it's a banner ad or video ads or print ads, whatever it may be, there are certain keywords that will be attractive to your target consumers. And you want to select the best keywords that will attract those consumers. And remember, we reviewed our consumer groups and we identified the consumers we wanted to target. So the top three that we identified here, I've identified four, as you can see here, M1, M2, M3, and M8. The top three will appear here. And you can see M1, M2, and M3. M1, M2, M3. So the top three identified here will appear on my messaging screen. And here I can select up to eight keywords. In fact, I should select as, as many as I can, in this case, eight of each group. So I can select eight and M1. And M1 is, by the way, runs down here and then continues on to here. So you've got 20 keywords for all of the consumer groups. And what I can do then is just check on and off the keywords that I believe are gonna be the best for each of these consumer groups. And the system won't allow me to select more than eight. Uh, it'll allow me to select fewer than eight, but I really should try to, try to do eight. Um, and so what will then happen is, similar to how targeting works, at midnight, this will lock. So I can change it as often as I want today, Monday. Midnight comes, it locks everything for a day. And then when the day is done, it'll show me my results. And you'll see here uh, in our legend, we have a green rectangle or outline that will appear over all the check marks that have the top performing keywords. So for example, if organic fresh performs really well for M1, I will see a green outline around this check mark, which indicates to me that that was a great choice. And so that my objective then is to have green outlines around all of my selections because that indicates maximum targeting and that will make my messaging effectiveness as close to 100% as possible. And I can, again, I change this every second day or so on in order to experiment and try to refine my selections as much as possible. If I end up changing my targeting partway through, this too will also change to identify the new groups that I'm targeting because this is only gonna show your top three. And then finally, we have media targeting. And here we have 10 media options. So once we have identified the consumers we wanna target, We've crafted our messages to attract those consumers. Now we have to decide, well, how do we get this message in front of those consumers? And we do that through various media options like you see here, whether it's TV and video or podcasts or radio or direct mail. And so we have to decide of the money we're spending on advertising, how much are we gonna put in each of the media? And as a small business, we know we can't necessarily afford to put our money everywhere, or at least not a lot of money everywhere. So we have to be selective and try to be targeted with that. And so what happens now is we can see these little stars. The stars identify or the media with the highest reach in my particular business experience. By the way, if you run a new business or somebody else is playing this simulation, they're gonna have different results here. So your media, best media options are not gonna be the same as anyone else's. Same with messaging and target. Every time you run the simulation, it will be different. If other players playing it, it will be different. So here, it's given me some insight that I should focus most of my effort and fo um, focus on these five options here. So I, again, I would identify what percentage of my money, simply by clicking up and down, what percentage of my money I want to apply 
to each of these. So I might start with zero everywhere, except put most of my money, and again, it has to add up to 100% on just these particular items. And so once I do that, again, I can have all day to do it. Eventually, it will lock at midnight, and then next 24 hours, I'll be able to see the results, and then it'll show me these icons that you see here, which will identify when my allocation is perfect and when it's too high or too low. So if it's perfect, I want to leave it exactly the way it is. And if, for example, a sponsorship, if I got a green icon tomorrow, I should leave it exactly at 20% because it's perfect. If I get one of these icons which says allocation is too high, then I should maybe lower that 20%. How much should I lower it? I'm not sure, I have to experiment with that. So I should experiment, make a change. And you can see here, every time I make a change, it actually shows me what it was before I made the change. So it was 20, st uh, stays at 20. If I change it to 15, it just reminds me that it used to be 20. That's just a guide to help me remember you know, what it was and what I'm gonna change to. And so I can experiment with this every few days in order to refine my media targeting and try to get my media effectiveness close to 100% as possible. So now remember my targeting, messaging, and media all feed, feed in to our advertising effectiveness. And that will influence the percentage of our advertising effectiveness, which influences how effective the money we invest here is going to be. So we wanna have 100% advertising effectiveness because that means the $50 I'm spending here will be maximized. Whereas if perhaps if my advertising effectiveness may be as low as 50%, then my $50 may not go very far. Maybe it may only go as far as $25 because it's only 50% effective. So I'm really wasting money if my advertising effectiveness is not as high as possible. So that's how marketing works in GoVenture Entrepreneur. You're going to have to experiment and that's part of how real business works. No one knows the answers. It's always about experimentation and trying to be focused on maximizing your investments. Thanks for listening.